I was probably destined to cover probability, just through statistics alone. I started making thoughts pieces in the first lockdown in 2020, and the core theme has been topics, just general topics. If I stopped at 50 like I originally planned, then this video would have never come into being. But alas, here we are. For those who get how probability works, then this will just be a video about some guy who finds its role in society interesting. Either way, you may come out the other side with a new insight on how probability works. But time will tell. A simple example to start off with can be flipping a coin. Okay, we all know. In this scenario, there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails, with each outcome having an equal probability of one half or 50%. This means that if you flip a coin multiple times, you expect to get approximately half heads and half tails. Now, let's level up to another example, winning the lottery. It's often considered a highly unlikely event with odds that can range from one in a few thousand to one in millions, depending on the specific lottery game. These odds can vary depending on different factors. However, they give an idea of just how unlikely winning the lottery can be. Here are some events that are more likely to happen than winning the lottery. One, dying in a car accident. The odds of dying in a car accident in your lifetime are approximately 1 in 107. Those odds are staggering. But you might think, hey, even though it sucks that that many people die, 1 in 107 over an average lifespan, that's still not bad for winning the lottery. Okay then, let's keep going. 2. Becoming a professional athlete. And here's Terry Prudeau, she's a clown shoe resoler. You know what they say about clowns with big feet? Oh yeah. Oh! The odds of becoming a professional athlete in a major sport are approximately 1 in 22,000. 3. Winning an Olympic medal. The odds of winning an Olympic medal are approximately 1 in 662,000. 4. Being struck by lightning. The odds of being struck by lightning in a given year are approximately 1 in 1,222,000. And that's still more likely to happen to you than winning the lottery. You still want to play against those odds and try to win big? I'm sorry. I didn't do fucking shit. I didn't rig shit. I didn't fucking do this. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about any of this. Do you personally know people that have been struck by lightning? Five, getting struck by a meteor. The odds of getting struck by a meteor are approximately 1 in 1.6 million. 6. Getting attacked by a shark. This one's a popular example. The odds of being attacked by a shark are approximately 1 in 11.5 million. Dude. And finally, oh 7. God. Giving birth to identical quadruplets. The odds of giving birth to identical quadruplets are approximately 1 in 13 million. As a person without a uterus, that number goes from 1 to 0 in 13 million. And it's still got higher odds than winning the lottery. Don't quote me though. So that's probability for you. But this isn't the end of the video, it's the beginning! Hello everyone and welcome back to another thoughts piece by me, your boy Joe Van. What do you think the odds were of me making a video about this topic eventually? Not zero it seems. Now, this wouldn't be a thoughts piece if we didn't go over the word and its meaning. So let's do that now. The word probability has its roots in the Latin word probabilitas, which means likelihood. The concept of probability has been around for centuries and has been studied by mathematicians and philosophers in various forms. One of the earliest recorded discussions of probability can be traced back to the 7th century Arabic mathematician El Khalil, who considered the concept of probability in the context of games of chance. Like most great concepts, their origins are rooted in real-life applications, like a country's economy, war, or street games. When looking up what games, I uncovered a couple. Hazard was a dice game dating back to at least the 13th century and possibly of Arabic origin. The word hazard derives from the Arabic alzir, which means die, hence its modern-day English use in construction sites. Mini tangent here, but archaeological evidence suggests that chess has ancient roots in Persia and Central Asia. 
Excavations at a 7th century site in the city of Samarkand, Uzbekistan, uncovered seven small carved figures that closely resemble later Persian descriptions of chess pieces. They included a king, counselor, elephant, horse, chariot, and pawn. The earliest literary reference to chess is in a Persian romance of the same period. Not only did the hero excel in hunting and riding, he was also a skilled chess player, but back then it was called Game of Kings, not chess. Regardless, chess is strategy, not chance. So back to that. In the 16th and 17th centuries, Italian mathematicians, including Girolamo Cardano and Galileo Galilei, further developed the mathematical theory of probability. Then in the 18th century, the Swiss mathematician Jacob Bernoulli wrote a seminal work on the subject called Ars Conjectandi, which laid out the foundations of probability theory as a mathematical discipline. The concept of probability then became an important part of mathematical statistics, which is the study of collecting, analyzing, and making inferences from data. Today, the concept of probability is widely used in various fields, including science, engineering, economics, and finance, to make predictions and decisions based on uncertain information. So, let's get into that uncertainty and see how we use, keep, group, and separate data. Prediction and probability are related but distinct concepts. A prediction is a statement about an event or outcome that is expected to happen in the future. It's based on past data and experience that can take the form of a quantitative estimate or a qualitative judgment. For example, a weather forecast is a prediction of what the weather will be like in a certain location on a certain day. Probability, on the other hand, is the mathematical measurement of the likelihood of a specific event or outcome. It's expressed as a number between zero and one, with zero representing an impossible event and one representing a certain event. The probability of an event can be used to make predictions, but it's more formal and a systematic approach. A prediction is a statement about what is expected to happen, while probability is a measurement of the likelihood of an event occurring. Probabilities can be used to make predictions, but not all predictions are based on probabilities. Does that get your head spinning a bit? Let's talk about that. We humans have several limitations when it comes to understanding and working with probability. We often rely on our intuition when making judgments about probabilities, which can lead to systematic errors. For example, people at large tend to overestimate the probability of rare events, such as winning the lottery, because they focus on vivid and memorable events. Then you got confirmation biases, which is us leaning toward information that confirms our beliefs. This can affect the perception of probabilities and lead to overconfidence in predictions and an unwillingness to revise probabilities based on new evidence. And the list goes on. We're just not made for math. Some of us are, but most people aren't. I'm not made for math. The only kind of math that comes easy to me is the math of sentences. I can follow an idea or thread of logic to its ultimate conclusion, but I'm not perfect at it either. It's a reason why we as a species turned to records in the first place, because even the best mnemonics, people with hyperthymestic syndrome or highly superior autobiographical memory, couldn't recount the details of exchanges between citizens of a city with a million people. That's just too much. These limitations highlight the importance of using systematic and evidence-based methods when making predictions and decisions based on probability. In many fields, such as finance, insurance, and medicine, probabilistic models are used to make decisions and predictions based on large amounts of data and formal methods. This can help overcome some of the limitations of human intuition and bias. You know what doesn't? Fortune tellers. So naturally, we're gonna go there now. Fortune-telling and probability are not directly linked, as fortune-telling is based on supernatural or mystical beliefs. However, there are some similarities based on the two in terms of making predictions about the future. 
In fortune telling, the outcome of events are believed to be influenced by supernatural or mystical forces, such as astrology, tarot cards, or the positions of celestial bodies. Probability bases the outcome of events from a mathematical framework, making predictions about the likelihood of events based on empirical data and statistical analysis. Probabilistic models take into account historical data and patterns to make predictions about the future. Fortune telling often uses a technique called cold reading. It's where they use vagaries to fish their clients into answering their own questions, which the fortune teller then reinforces as their own words. In both cases, predictions are being made about the future, but the methods to make those predictions are vastly different. Fortune telling is not based on scientific or empirical evidence, and as a result, predictions made using probability are generally considered to be more reliable and accurate. It's why government employees get hired because they went to school for economics, not because they have a CV 10 pages long with celebrities they predicted would make it big. But what the hell does the government know after all? Well, why don't we get into it? Governments can use probability in several ways to make decisions and solve problems. Some examples include 1. That probability can be used to assess the likelihood of various risks, such as natural disasters, pandemics, or terrorist attacks. This information can help governments allocate resources, make contingency plans, and take preventative measures. 2. Governments often face decisions that involve uncertainty such as investments in infrastructure, environmental policies, and health initiatives. Probabilistic models can be used to analyze the trade-offs between different options and to make informed decisions based on the likelihood of various outcomes. They don't always choose the right one, especially when a suitcase full of cash slams down covering all those papers of data on it. But nonetheless, that's what the data can help with. 3. Probability can be used to make forecasts about a variety of economic and social indicators, such as employment rates, population growth, and crime rates. This information can help governments plan for the future and make informed decisions about resource allocation and policy making. So, at least in theory, probability provides a systematic and evidence-based approach to decision-making and problem-solving, which is valuable for governments. Then it just becomes a point of whether the government uses the data to help people, or ignore it to further their own personal goal of having like five yachts and ten mansions in the Cayman Islands. By incorporating probabilistic models into their decision-making processes, governments can make more informed decisions and allocate resources more effectively. And with that, we've almost covered the topic, but there's one more avenue I want to go down before capping this topic off. The future potential for probability is vast, as probabilistic models and methods are becoming increasingly sophisticated and widely used across a range of fields. Some of these areas where probability is likely to have a significant impact in the future include artificial intelligence and machine learning, as machine learning algorithms become more advanced, they will rely increasingly on probabilistic models to make predictions and decisions. Probability, as we're already beginning to see, will play an important role in developing the accuracy and reliability of AI systems. Healthcare. Probabilistic models can be used to predict the likelihood of various health outcomes, such as disease progression, treatment efficacy, and drug interactions. This information can be used to develop more personalized and effective healthcare strategies. Climate modeling. Probabilistic models can be used to predict the impacts of climate change on various ecosystems and to develop adaption strategies. This information can help governments and organizations prepare for and mitigate the effects of climate change. Again, should these powerful entities choose to act on the data. Financial modeling. Probabilistic models are widely used in finance, but their potential for predicting financial outcomes and making investment decisions is likely to continue to increase. The use of probabilistic models in finance is likely to become more sophisticated and to incorporate, just like, more data sources. Transportation and logistics. This one is an ever-improving sector, something that I experience firsthand using Waze and Google Maps for work and just recreationally. Probabilistic models can be used to optimize transportation networks, predict travel times and traffic patterns, and make delivery predictions. This information can help organizations improve their logistics 
and transportation operations. Finally, social sciences. Probabilistic models can be used to make predictions about social phenomena, such as population growth, migration patterns, and crime rates. This data can help governments and organizations make more informed decisions as long as they actually use it. In conclusion, as the availability of data continues to grow, the application of probability is likely to become even more diverse and impactful. It's one of those things you can never have enough of, and we keep getting more and more data to use. There's a thing called Laplace's Demon, which is described in a nutshell as such. If some creature knew everything's position and motion at one moment, then the law of physics would give it complete knowledge of the future. That is the ultimate goal of probability. What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? At least for use in weather forecasting. But there you have it. The subject of probability and all its boring glory. I hope you had a fun time going over this subject of math with me, used by businesses, governments, and little creatures who know what you're going to do tomorrow. Thanks as always for checking it out. I wish nothing but love in your lives and ask you to remember to keep on thinking. Like and subscribe for more. And until next time, ciao for now. Peace!